Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the new Z50 and comparing its high ISO performance against the D500. Just to let you know, this video is currently being filmed with a Z50 and using its 16 to 50 kit lens as well. So this is effectively what is recording me right now. Um, it is using face tracking. I'm not particularly moving too much around the frame, but it will keep me in focus. And also if I block that, it will then refocus on the closest subject to it. So it works quite nicely to be able to move from one location back to another. I am incredibly interested to see what these results are going to be because we have the same megapixel count on the sensors. We also then have the same high ISO that's selectable, a 51,000 ISO. So it's going to be really interesting to see if that then conveys into the type of noise performance that we get. Can we notice any differences between the Z50, the D500? Are there any differences in processing? Are there going to be any differences with the Z50 having on-sensor focusing? That's what we're going to take a look at today. So I'm particularly interested to see how this is going to come out. Now, just before we start looking at these results, as always, I am just showing you what the camera produces. I want you to have your own opinion on that. I will obviously talk about my thoughts and my opinions, but if you're sitting there going, well, I don't agree with that, that's perfectly fine, especially when it comes to ISO, ISO, noise performance, grain. Some people like it, some people don't. It's a massively personal thing. So look at what I'm showing you and then make your own assumptions from that as you do with your own photography. I'm going to be testing them all the way from low ISO all the way up to their highest ISO settings. So yes, this is not kind of a out in the bout in a real world. This is more of a exact location, exact situation, exact subject. That's what we're going to be doing here. When it comes to high ISO performance, personally, I don't think people use high ISO options enough to get the best out of their other settings, so it's a shutter speed and aperture, but everyone's entitled to shoot their, the way they want to. So let's go take a look and see what the results look like. Hey everybody, so to keep this video a bit shorter, what I've done is we're gonna to start to ISO 400 because at the base ISO, there's not really any difference. Um, Z50 on the left, D500 on the right, and both of them are with uh, the 50 millimeter lens on them. Both of them are ISO 400, obviously. Both are f/8, and both at a 25th of a second. So we'll go take a look at one to one first of all. So at one to one, you can see that both images are really nice and sharp. Lots of detail. There's not really any noticeable noise. Only until we start kind of looking at these blank, shadowed areas do we start to see a bit of noise come through. And they're almost identical, as you would expect them to be, or as we expected them to be. Um, when we go to 2 to 1, we can see that they are starting to handle their noise differently. If we look at this gray square here, it almost looks like larger grain than it does on a D500. The D500 looks like finer grain, but I would still say that the level of noise is the same. So overall, ISO 400 very similar, although we can start to see that there's clearly going to be some differences as we go. In this blue color here, it does appear that the D500 has more noise, whereas I think in this gray color, it looks like the Z50 has more noise. What I think it's going to be as we get further into this video is it's going to be about your personal preference when it comes to noise. So ISO 800, again, Z50 on the left, D500 on the right. If we go in at one-to-one, -one, everything's still nice and sharp. Everything that's kind of lit and got detail in there, it's all just still really nice and sharp. We can start to see noise coming in in these areas of the frame. So at two-to-one, you can see that, again, the level of noise is about the same. But if we look at particular colors, it looks ever so slightly different. So I feel like this gray on the Z50 produces more noise, whereas quite clearly this pink on the D500 produces more noise. So does this lime green color as well. So there's definitely a difference in the way that they produce their noise, but you, you know, you're not gonna notice this difference in everyday photography. They're, they're very similar at ISO 800 and 
perfectly acceptable at ISO 800 as well. Right, so we're just going to jump to 3200 ISO. We'll quickly have a look at one to one and we can see there's a tiny bit of noise starting to come in, but both cameras still performing really nicely. There's not going to be any major distractions from any shots that you're taking. Key thing here is that both cameras are completely usable for 3200 ISO. However, when we look at two to one, there is an even bigger difference between them now. Not necessarily in the level of noise, but what that noise looks like. So the D500 is definitely gaining a lot more grain here, and it's a lot more kind of almost like film noise. It's traditional kind of grainy film noise. Z50 is gaining a lot more color noise. If you look at this purple square on the D500 here on the right hand side, you can see the tiny kind of black and white dots. Whereas on the Z50, what we're getting is a bit more kind of magenta and color coming in that we're just not getting in the D500. So quite clearly there's something different that's producing this different color noise to what we're used to with the D500. Okay, so 6400 ISO, let's go take a look. So at one to one, we can see the noise is starting to come through in the image. It's still not hugely distracting. Some of you might think that this is starting to get a bit too much especially in some of the, this white area up here. In the areas that are lit, that are in focus, it's still nice and sharp at one to one. Um, so definitely still usable from both cameras. But when we go to two to one, we can start to see that things are progressing the way that we thought. So D500 is still getting the grainier noise. It looks like it's finer grain, but the Z50 is suffering from color noise, whereas the D500 is not suffering from any color noise. Obviously, there's no noise reduction or color reduction turned on the D500 or anything like that. So it's not like it is there and it's been removed. It, it, the D500 has no color noise like the Z50 is currently generating. But in replacement of that color noise, we're getting this kind of finer grain and it does appear so in some situations that it might look like the D500 has slightly more grain. As we move around the frame, again, it just appears because of that finer grain, it just appears like the D500 has slightly more, but depending on where we look, you can see here that we're getting color noise in the Z50 where we would not get noise in the D500. So there's definitely a difference. And as I mentioned, this is just gonna come down to your preference. What are you gonna be preferring in your shots? What are you gonna find easier to fix afterwards? How is it gonna be easier for you to edit these images, for example? Um, is color noise going to be easier for you to fix or is that fine detail grain going to be easier for you to fix? So 12,800 ISO on both cameras. We'll go take a look at one-to-one. -one. So at one-to-one -one we can definitely see that there's way more noise in the shot at 12,800 ISO as you would expect. And again, it is all about how the grain is different. You get this fine kind of on the D500 and then on the Z50 we're getting this kind of grain that's ha got more color in there. There's a lot more color noise going on. I kind of feel like it's not too bad at one-to-one. -one. We could still easily go and clean this up. We could do noise reduction. We could clean this up. The shot is still going to look okay if we needed to shoot at 12,800, which is a fair thing to say with kind of today's technology and ISO performance, for example. At two to one, we get a much clearer picture of what's going on. And again, it is just that fine grain on the D500, whereas the Z50 is just producing this kind of, it's almost like a slightly larger grain and mixed in with the color noise. And as I mentioned, it is just preference, it is gonna be preference. There is no real difference in kind of detail or sharpness. So it's mainly just gonna come down to preference, what type of noise you prefer. Just depends on your workflow and any editing that you're doing, I suppose. Okay, we're at 25,000 ISO. And as we've kind of come to see with the other examples, it's kind of more of the same thing really. So let's go take a look. Here we are at one-to-one -one and it is just, all down to your preference of grain. I personally wouldn't say that there's going to be much of a difference in terms of detail and sharpness. It, it is just down to the D500 is that kind of black and white fine almost film-like grain whereas this Z50 is producing a lot more color noise 
and it's just not as kind of a fine grain. We'll take a quick look at two to one. And again, it just kind of reaffirms that, that we've got, if we look at this purple square here, lots of color noise in the Z50, but none in the D500 at all. But then the D500 looks like it's got more grain. Just looking at noise performance, and we can see the difference right there in front of us. D500 has a lot of grain, but Z50 has a lot of color noise. Okay. So here we are at 51,000 ISO. It's definitely some interesting things to look at in this shot. Um, so let's go take a look, see what we can see. So at 51,000 ISO, the key things to take away from here, obviously there's a lot of noise in both shots, so we're already here at one to one. But for me, although the Z50 has a lot more color noise in there, I do feel like it looks sharper. Also, there are just bits of certain details that appear to have just been removed on the D500 shot, for example. So what I'll do is I'll, we'll, we'll go in at two to one and I'll talk to you about some of this stuff. So here we are at two to one and you see this gold ring here that was there in earlier shots is kind of there, but completely gone. If you weren't looking for it, you wouldn't have noticed it. This gold ring here as well is almost gone on the D500 shot. It's there in the Z50 shot. Again, this screw here with the gold kind of outline, outring to it, this is on the back of a um, full frame sensor. You can see that again, that's losing its detail here. So there are definitely some differences now we're at ISO 51000 in the way that these cameras are handling how they're dealing with all this noise. Another thing to note is we know there's a lot of color noise in the Z50. But interestingly, the D500 has now started to develop some color blotching at 51,000. So these kind of green dots here that have popped up at 51,000 ISO, a couple of kind of purple color and green along this edge here as well. So it's definitely not as clear cut as I thought it was going to be. I would say that if you were going to shoot at 51,000 ISO, maybe if you could remove the color noise, maybe the Z50 would give you a better final image after you've gone and edited it. But it's personal preference. So if you prefer that kind of black and white fine grain that we get from the D500, that's entirely up to you. But overall, it was much closer than I was expecting um, in terms of noise performance. Z50 stands up to D500 in terms of grain. It's just they have a very, very different results when it comes to color noise. That's something to keep in mind. Right. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope that you found it useful. It was definitely interesting from my point of view just to kind of figure out which are one of these cameras. So these are kind of the, the current range of, of DX, APS-C, mirrorless and DSLR cameras that are available from Nikon right now. So I always thought it'd be interesting to see which one of them performs better, which one performs better at high ISO performance. Is the D500 still the incredibly good low light camera for a cropped sensor camera, or has it been beaten? Hope that you found it useful, hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye.